This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris. Welcome to the Photography Guild. Welcome back to the Photography Guild. I wanted to thank everyone who sent in the fabulous photos they took of our last episode, the landscape photography. Just a wonderful job. Kudos to you guys. Well, I'm hoping some of you will be inspired by this month's episode. It's all about seascape photography. You know, lots of people are drawn to the beach, and as photographers, it really represents a wonderful array of photographic possibilities for us. There are always interesting rock formations at the beach. There are incredible waves that are breaking all the time. And then, of course, there's the wonderful skies and light that's there. But because of the expanse at the ocean, all that water, all that sky, sometimes our photographs aren't all that they could be. So here's a few tips to make your seascape photographs really great. Now the first tip is when you go to take a shot, make sure that you find a point of interest. Now this is really important when you're at the coast because if you're not careful, your shots can be made up largely of just sky and water. And there's nothing wrong with sky or water, but you do need to have something in your frame that can draw the eye of the person who's viewing your shot. Now in this photograph here, I chose to have a rock in the sea be my focal point and I was able to catch some waves breaking up against it. So that's what causes the interest in this photo. Now another thing you can focus on is wave movement. Now you'll notice in this shot, um, I was able to get some not only movement, but great color and texture in the wave. So that can make a really interesting focal point for a photograph. Another option is go for some little small movement, ripples in the water. This is actually, I got down low and I was able to get some of the foam and the bubbles that come up on the very edge of a wave after it's broken. So that also can create some interest. Now another thing to consider is find some interesting foregrounds. You know at the coast um, there's quite often a lot of empty backgrounds, you know the horizons with the sea meeting the sky, and so it can be really important to start looking for shots that have some interesting foregrounds. Now this shot I got as I was walking towards the coastline, they had these great walk, uh, rock formations, and so I positioned myself so so that was the foreground. Now you'll notice um, I have a very uh, deep depth of field going on here because everything is pretty much in focus. And to accomplish that, you're gonna want a small aperture, which means a larger f-stop. And if you remember our episode on aperture, what happens is when we go for a small aperture, we're constricting the amount of light that's going in through our lens and that consequently lets everything be um, more clear through the shot. Now in this particular shot, I did want you to see that there is ocean. You can even see a little wave breaking back down uh, behind there. Um, in other shots, I chose to have the ocean more blurred and I went for a shallow depth of field, but play with both. Um, but remember, if you want everything to be in focus, um, you need to use a small aperture. Another thing to remember is that your camera can be held two ways, so don't forget horizontal and vertical shots. I don't know why this is, but most of the time when we're out in these very large um, spaces, we tend to only hold our camera in the horizontal position. But I wanted to show you um, a couple of photos that I took here where I deliberately took one shot horizontal and then I deliberately rotated the camera 90 degrees to do the vertical shot. Um, I love how, you know, I love that you see the long horizon in the deep blue um, color in the, in the deeper waters, but I do love in the vertical shot 
how you get to see that little bird and you see this impending wave coming towards him. So good idea to remember to switch up your shots, sometimes horizontal, sometimes vertical. Also, try to look for color. You know, you're going to obviously see your browns and your grays and your blues, but if you have a series of shots that are only using that same palette, it can get kind of boring. So really put your eyes open and see if you can find, like on the shot on the left, they had this kind of succulent that was growing in the dunes, and there was not only the variation in the color of the plant, the red and the green, green um, but then one of them was actually blooming and I was able to catch a little bit of that yellow now in that shot you can see I went with a shallow depth of field I don't have the ocean in focus that much because I really wanted to concentrate on that color contrast but on the second photo there I was down low and I liked the bands of color that I got in that shot so when you're there at the coast Remember, try to find those unusual colors or um, set your shot up so that you capture um, color in an interesting way. Now this next tip really just requires some patience, but there is a little bit of an art to looking for interesting seas. Um, there, of course, there's always incredible waves that are breaking depending on what the sky is doing, the kind of colors you can capture. In this photo, it's interesting, you have really three bands of color. You have the foreground, which is the lighter blue. You've got the wave that's got that great green blue. And then beyond it, we have that deep deeper blue. So that's kind of interesting. But notice how in this shot, um, when I'm looking to capture an interesting wave or an interesting sea, the shot is mainly two-thirds water. So if you look back up and look at this shot a little bit that my horizon line is way up high it's you know about a third of the way down so two-thirds of this shot is C so that's something to keep in mind when you're composing your shots when you're photographing waves or interesting seas now, if you're looking for interesting skies, we flip it around. The sky is two thirds of the shot and the ocean and the land is the bottom third. So again, um, I sometimes like on this day I was there, there was a lot of fog going on and it was just towards the end that I started to see a little semblance of something interesting in the sky. So I wanted to capture that. Now, if I had divided the photo in half, Uh, not so interesting if you think about the rule of thirds but if you are photographing skies you can't just have sky usually you want to have a little bit of sea and land make that the bottom third of your shot have the sky be two-thirds of your shot now another thing is once you've taken a million photos of the waves you also should start looking for some things around you like reflections you know at the coast um, it is always changing from hour to hour the tides can be in they can be out there can be all kinds of plants and animals that are exposed when the tide is out and that's one of the things that I experienced on this particular day the tide was out and there was still some water that had pooled very shallow at the base of the cliffs here and I was able to capture this great reflection shot. You know, it's not your typical, oh, I'm at the ocean shot, but if you were put together um, sort of a catalog or a book of this particular um, place that you were visiting, having a shot like this um, that shows the cliffs and the reflections in the water can be really interesting. Now here's a last tip that's really interesting. Look for details. Again, I know you're at the ocean, everything's huge, and you get kind of swept away by it. But towards the end of your shooting time, start looking for these small details. Now this was really interesting. There was water that was being pulled out into the ocean that was creating these kind of, um, this movement right over the sand. And I happened to find one of these little um, sea plants that was just rooted right there in the sand and the combination of the two shows some very interesting detail 
So let's talk a little bit about planning for your trip um, to the coast to do some seascape photography. Well, the first thing I would do and what I did do is if you remember in our um, travel uh, episode, travel photography episode, I had you create a little booklet that you could keep in your camera bag on shots that you wanted to take. And that's exactly what I did for this seascape um, episode. I knew exactly the shots I wanted to get or in general, and I wrote them down in my book. And I was really glad that I did that because when I got there, I tend to forget everything because I'm so engrossed in what's going on. But it was nice to go back and refer to my notes in my little booklet. And then that way, if I go back to another seascape, I can refer to that. I don't have to keep all of that knowledge in my mind. Now, as far as the gear, um, I took two lenses with me. I took my wide angle to get those really great horizontal shots that we love. But I have to tell you, the lens that I just love loved using was my telephoto zoom. Now the thing I loved about that is that one, I don't have to get super close to the water um, to get my shots. You know, luckily I had people there with me who could warn me if I was about to get, you know, creamed by a wave. But when you have a telephoto zoom, you can be really far back and capture quite a bit of detail in the waves. The other thing that was fun about it is I was able to photograph the birds in flight and you could really see them and I could go into power drive and take a series of shots as they were taking off or flapping their wings. So the telephoto zoom was a surprise for me. I really loved having it with me. Now the next gear you definitely are going to want to have is your camera bag or what I did for this trip is I wore a camera vest and um, the bag is great but sometimes um, it gets a little cumbersome for me. Um, for this shot I had to actually hike in um, a mile or so into a fairly, it was a pretty graded steep hike in. Um, and so to have my bag as I was climbing up on those cliffs and everything could have thrown my balance off where as with a photo vest it's basically just a big vest that has a ton of pockets in it and they're made for photographers so I was able to have like my telephoto lens in one of my pockets and I could have um, my book in another one and I could have my phone and my wallet and all the things that I needed with me but they I was wearing them so it kept my balance nice and even you know, when you're photographing at the beach or any place where there's elements, you have to be really careful when you're switching your lenses in and out because like, let's say you were to drop your lens cap. Well, it goes in the sand. It's very hard to get those particles off. And um, you want to make sure that you have pockets and things so that you can get your gear safely stowed. Now, when you're switching out lenses, you have to be really careful. So that's why it's important to have either camera bag or a vest with you so that you can keep your your gear um, nice and safe. Now let's talk a little bit about your settings on your camera. Now you're going to be shooting outside obviously so we would want to have a, as low an ISO as you can possibly manage around 1 or 200 because remember a low ISO uh, means that we get a finer grain photo but what your ISO is set out really does depend on where um, your aperture is set at and um, you'll find that if you're shooting in a large aperture which means a shallow depth of field you're letting in a lot of light so your app your ISO will be a lower number but if you start wanting to get um, deep depth of field shots you may have to bump your ISO up a little bit now for this shoot that I was on, I mainly kept my camera in the AV mode, the aperture value mode, and that's what I was playing with. I would decide on a shot, do I want a shallow depth of field or do I want a uh, deep depth of field. But you could also play with the um, TV mode if you wanted, the time value mode. Um, the thing with that though is you um, are going to, if you want to slow shot your shutter down quite a bit, you're going to have to carry a tripod with you. So just keep that in mind. 
Now, when you get home and you import um, all your images off your SD card, you can have a lot of fun um, in post with cropping for sure. I mean, it's fun to go in and really get in tight on some of these shots. It just, it really makes the photo come alive. Another thing to look for in post is to see about your horizon lines. Many times when we're out on a shoot, you know, we're so excited, we're so in the movement, we're a little off balance, um, and our horizon lines come in kind of cockeyed, and that can really make your photo, which could be an outstanding photo, look a little off. So look and see if your software has the capability for straightening horizon lines. The software that I use is made by Apple. It's called Aperture, and it has a really great uh, tool for straightening things. And what it does is it throws a grid up on your photo, and then you can manipulate the image almost um, in a 3D way uh, to get that horizon nice and straight. So your assignment is to see if you can get yourself to the ocean to practice some seascape photography. Now we're getting into the winter months here where I live in Northern California and you might think that oh when the winter's kind of funky it's not a good time but I have to tell you my experience with this shoot that we went on was interesting. We were driving north, this was at Point Reyes um, up in Northern California and it was so foggy I could hardly see anything and I was thinking oh no I'm not going to get anything good but what happened is the closer when I hiked in in, uh, towards the coast then boom I had all this wonderful light and sunshine and as you can see I, I was thrilled with the shots that I got but even if it had been a gloomy day I am absolutely convinced that if you've got your camera and you're looking for things you can make incredible art with your camera just about anywhere and with any kind of weather you know, each of us shoots so many photographs and are all of them outstanding? No, but you know what? There's always one or two gems in just about every uh, shoot that we do. So think about sharing your photos with the rest of the group. There's 30,000 of us now watching this podcast and we're all over the world. So how great would it be for you to share where you went to visit and um, share your photos with the rest of us? So be brave and post one or two of your photos up on the Photography Guild page on Flickr. Now, if you need help, please go to our website and you can uh, see our how-to tutorial. Well, next month, since we're kind of getting into the winter months at that point, I thought it might be fun to try some minimalist photography. So have fun at the ocean and I'll see you next time. For more information on this episode, go to our website and visit the Photography Guild show notes. Also, if you have any questions or ideas, send us an email. Thanks for watching.